Hi guys, uh, we're here. No breaks. I have notes. Uh, before we move on though, ExpressVPN. Have you heard of it? You should go get one. ExpressVPN.com/rttv. I looked at the link just to see if I was right, and I was. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Mike. Uh, create a free Rooster Teeth account right now and join us in chat. I got you guys covered. I'm over here. You saw us chatting with you as we were uh, fixing some stuff up. Um, if you want to pay for, a uh, sorry, <laughs> I have a script and I'm working off of it. And clearly I am going off script. So let me, let me read this. Create a free Rooster Teeth account right now and join us in chat. If you want to pay for one though, I mean, I'll, I'll talk about it later. Wink wonk. Um, also shout out to Ruby this weekend uh, when they're coming back to volume eight is their hundredth episode. That team has been working really hard the past eight years. Can you believe that? Um, and let's congratulate them on a job well done. And finally, we're here. Welcome to I Have Notes. <laughs> I am a face you may have seen, Isa Badiola. What's up? Uh, here, a face you also have seen before, but it's not Carrie. It's Noelle Wiggins. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. <laughs> I've been wanting to do that my entire <laughs> life, by the way. I so wanted to do that. Oh. What is up, everybody? I am Noel. Thank you for having me, Issa. Thank you for being for, for having me on. I have notes because I have some notes. He has some notes. It's true. This is canon fact. Noel, on you, loose leaf paper. On loose leaf paper. You will see <laughs> more frequently um, uh, this upcoming month. But I do want to show you guys a face you haven't seen here before, but he's handsome. It's George <laughs> Panga. <laughs> hey, hey, it's me. Hey. Hello. Welcome. I'm definitely not the reason why we're definitely on time. <laughs> no, no. George was the most punctual out of all of us, but it's okay. For 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 everyone in chat's going for for for. Um, thanks, George, for joining us. And uh, on to our next guest. You have seen him before, and he's just as handsome. It's Joshua Kazemi. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm back. He's back. <laughs> A little cutie patootie. Uh, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Welcome. Which I, real quick, Issa, yes. I, 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 I'm going to have to interrupt you for a second because okay. I just want to say I am loving your hair right now. <laughs> Shut, your, up. It is, Shut up. It is, it's like real you, were, you, you, were, you were moving it around and I was like, yo, what are you... What type of product is in that? I was like, yo, it, it's there's so much volume. I was like, I am loving that hair. It it was like one of those like with doll Sassoon commercials at one moment, and I was like, yo, I see you, I see you. <laughs> shut shut up. <laughs> it, it's not just the volume. There's like a the fact that you're on camera, you can still see that like that healthy shine. <laughs> Look at that. that like, mm. There's so many nutrients. Mm. Like I'm 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 absent of all of it. I have none of those nutrients. <laughs> None of those vitamins and minerals. Sh shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I think most of, um, in case you guys don't know, most of my interactions with Noel is Noel will compliment me and I'll tell him to be quiet. A hundred percent. I have so many compliments, compliments for Issa. Like, true. trust me. And I hate it. No, I don't hate it. He makes me feel special, but I hate it. <laughs> um, but yeah, hello. Welcome, guys. I have notes. Um mm. Uh, some new faces. Welcome, George. Hello. Hello. I uh, I was surprised to be here. Um, <laughs> I think I got asked because they were like, we need somebody who likes animation and is available <laughs> at this specific time of day. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly how the conversation went. Those were the, those were the exact words I typed to George. And I was like, hey, dude, you like animation, right bro? Yeah. Perfect. You, you like being available, bro? You like, like of, of the of the hundred the you know, hundreds of people that work at Rooster Teeth, you put the Venn diagram. It's like George right there. He's, right he's, he's the guy. Yeah, he's the guy that we gotta go get. But I'm happy to be here. Is that theme song always the theme song? I've watched a couple Yo, episodes. It is off the chain. It's that so is good. It's by, is that the best thing song in the company? Like, I'll say this. I, I, I'll wow. say this. Contrary to popular belief, I do not know how to freestyle. But that beat makes me believe I can. Yes. It makes me wow. believe. Wow. I'm literally about to spit bars the you moment, like, oh. But, but then I show up and I'm like, no, no, well, okay, you got to remember it. your limits, bro. You don't know how to do this. 
You're gonna have to write it down. You're gonna have Maybe to come that prepared. Maybe that will unlock some ability in your brain you didn't it's even true. know you had. Maybe this is the what, one. What em- embarrassment <laughs> <laughs> in front of the chat? This I is mean, this I'll, is your spark, Noel. This is it. <laughs> this is my spark. Uh, Look at that. Mm, mm. But just know that if I do freestyle, just know it's 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 written. It's written <laughs> and memorized. <laughs> It'll never be real. It'll never be off the dome. Not, not like that. Most freestyles that aren't is so off good. the dome, though. So you'll be fine. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. Say. They just memorize all their rhymes. Yeah. yeah. The freestyle right. part is the beat you do it on, not the actual mm. words you're saying. Uh, <laughs> I, you gotta, you gotta oh. I, I love how they have their phone nowadays, and they're just like rapping while still on their, on their phone, phone. And you can just kind of tell that off they're the, like. Off the dome. Off the dome. I think I saw like Doja Cat do that once on one of her like live freestyles before in the before times, and I was just like, oh, okay, well, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see. <laughs> um, George, thank you for being on, man. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you for so having much. me, Josh. Thank you for for being on, Issa. Thank you for for having me as a co-host. Noel's will, the co-host I will, now. Uh, <laughs> I will do my best. I will I will serve you well. <laughs> Thanks, Noel. Up there. Oh yeah, <laughs> I always get the direction wrong whenever I know, I do right? This. I can never. <laughs> oh, I pointed in the right direction. Oh, good job, I Noel. Did I did it. I good that's, job. That's why you're the Proud co-host, because you yeah, know. that's why. Exactly. <laughs> I can do it again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Boom! I Boom. Got it. As if it was so. gonna like change up on you. Like, is it? Now. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Mike might do some tricks later. <laughs> just, uh, just. Uh, just to get on your gears. I did want to um, highlight that George is new, and I think it's only fair to talk about you, George. Um, could you tell us what you do? <laughs> could you tell us uh, what you do at Rooster Teeth um, and what your day-to-day is like? Uh, sure. So my name is George Panga. I am the marketing coordinator here at Rooster Teeth Productions. Uh, which may- basically means that any any time information needs to be transported or assets needs to be transported or whatever between the departments at Rooster Teeth, it is my job as well as you know my boss and my boss's boss to make sure that gets to whomever it needs to get to. That's my primary job. Uh, when I first got hired at Rooster Teeth, two years ago now, I was in events and my job was to just make RTX go and I was <laughs> I called myself the Grand Poobah of the Guardians they don't know Grand that I called them that but I did yeah <laughs> um so I was I was in charge of all of our guardians we love them uh and day to day lately has been a lot of stuff for Black Heritage Month actually it's a lot of coordinating different conversations getting new assets made getting some fun stuff that we have announced could could be announcing a little bit later this month coming up um, so I can't tell you too much about my day-to-day right now, but mm. generally it's not too bad. It's a lot of meetings and slacks. <laughs> mm-hmm. And slacks. <laughs> yeah. It's like meetings and slacks about meetings about slacks. <laughs> uh, do you do you miss being in the office? I think mostly the answer is yes, but I'd like to hear from your mouth if the answer is yes. Yes. 100%. Okay. <laughs> 100% absolutely. I went, so I went from... Uh, the office to the apartment that my roommate and I, my, my roommate Tim, who actually met through Rooster Teeth, uh, nice. we went to a house because in the apartment I worked at a uh, a giant ten foot like uh, are they, is it a card table like the one used for like uh, for beer pong is what I usually for most of. Oh my god! <laughs> so <laughs> like I worked the at poker was, table? yeah. So I had my tiny bedroom <laughs> and a ten foot table that went from basically wall to wall, and I had a camping chair. And I would just sit there and I sat there and that's how I worked just like this for oh. four, for four oh. months. And then we moved into the house and got a real desk and a real chair. Uh, and the only thing that I realized in that entire process is, man, I miss the office. <laughs> oh. I'm imagining you like at the table and then like you're in you're in the middle. But then on the sides, you still have like the red solo cup yeah. and like, yeah. Rand randos are like playing uh like beer pong yeah, like around I mean, you. I'd be down. I uh at the beginning of quarantine, uh I, <laughs> at the beginning of quarantine I set up the laptop on the end of one table and then I would call friends on weekends, just like FaceTime or whatever, and I would go I would go spontaneous beer pong and I would the have the camera would be aimed at the other side of the table and I would just be throwing balls. <laughs> just, to see, <laughs> just to see who would play. I got a, I got I got like three a or four people, people to play along. Okay, yeah. nice, nice, nice. nice. Yeah. 
Um, so personal question as well. Uh, what animation do you like, George? I am very all over the place in terms of the mm. animation I like. But I will say that I've recently discovered because, again, I... Um, what is this, this cord? <laughs> uh, so my favorite, my favorite animated uh, property is the Boondocks. Oh, um, nice! My second favorite is Cowboy Bebop, which was the first anime, like a lot of people, that I was introduced mm. to. I'm very much a music person. In my heart, if if mm. the, if your music is good, I can forgive a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so, so somebody was like, "Hey." Uh, there's this anime. I know you say you don't like anime, but there's this one that has a lot of really cool jazz in it. And so I was like, all right. So the jazz drew me in and then I fell in love with Cowboy Bebop. And then uh, a friend of mine, Avery, who knew I loved Cowboy Bebop, introduced me to uh, Samurai Champloo, which nice. I realized full circle influenced the Boondocks, which really just explains why I like all nice. those <laughs> three things. Nice. So does that mean you also like uh, lo-fi hip hop as well? Oh yeah. Oh. Do you like to do you like to study like this? With your, with your I feel lo-fi? like with a cat right here. Yeah, yeah. I feel if if I'm listening to hip hop and I don't feel like I either need to think about the most complicated things in the world or take a nap, then it's not hip hop that I want to listen to. <laughs> Man, Cow- Cowboy Bebop, yeah, just like when you said, like, it did the same for me where it, it just kind of hit at the right age. Mm. You know, like, I was trying to, like, watch cartoon at night and all that stuff. And, then you, you know, like, you had the whole, like, a uh, adult swim situation. But, yeah, Cowboy Bebop, to me, some of the best music, really probably, like, the anime itself. I'm just going all over the place because, like, in my head, I just think so much of Cowboy Bebop. I would say the best thing outside of the music of Cowboy Bebop is the fact that it ends. Yes. Like it has yes. a definite ending, and when that ending hits, oh, it hits you right in the field bats. Mm. And then like it, it's this weird like <laughs> cathartic feeling of you're like it ended. I don't know how I feel about myself. What's happening in life? What do I do? But it's such a great show. I love anime, but some some certain animes, <clears throat> One Piece, just kind of <laughs> keep going, and it's like. Oh. They they just go so long that like I don't even want to watch it because I'm wondering you know do I have 400 years uh, left in my life I don't know I don't know sure you do so like You're Cowboy in- Bebop what is it 24 26 episodes yes. one of the two mm-hmm. yeah. and it just ends and it's such a good ending oh I love it love you it. you're in quarantine now Noel though so I mean. If you oh yeah, to. so what in quarantine years, I I have you enough. Could, you uh, have time. years. <laughs> I have enough. Uh, one, that, that's what it is. Quarantine years quarantine. equals like One Piece yeah. episodes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what arc are you on? <laughs> that's pretty good. Um, do you? Ooh, I do have a general question. Do you guys prefer the music for Cowboy Bebop more or Samurai Champloo? Or is it Ooh. an apples and oranges situation for you? Apples and oranges. You're asking me okay. if I like rap or jazz better. Like that's uh... that's hard. I'm, I'm I think, gonna, I'm I think gonna Cowboy say for Bebop. me. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah we on choose. the same page. Yeah. Oh, we on okay. the same page. Some of that music. Oh, it's too. It's so classic. Yeah. yeah. See, I, I think you already know where I'm going. Look, 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 look. I, I didn't have to finish. I just, just had like, to finish that little just, that little bar, me, and then you already knew. Take me away. Take me away. Take me. I don't even know. I, you don't like it's. It's one of those things where like I don't speak Japanese, but I will certainly try. And then with that song, you're just like, I don't know. I don't need I'm impressed. <laughs> you just gotta make the general sounds. Get you just gotta get there a little bit. You know, no one's asking mm, too. I much. don't think you said anything, but it sounded good. <laughs> Right, it sounded right. I think by the end of this episode, we can get you to freestyle. That was pretty oh, close. Oh yeah. <laughs> see, you know, you know, hey, hey, well, you know, we'll see how this, you know, what's, uh, we'll see how it works out. Yeah, like, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll see, yeah. we'll see. That, that's the goal. That's the goal. I'm, I'm officially in my mind. I'm just saying right now, get Noel to freestyle by the end of the month, and then. Uh, oh okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, have to, whole month. I'll have to write something. I'll have to write. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll we'll get like the whole audience here, as in like the everyone, every guest that we got on, we'll like put them, we'll put everyone in a room, and then I don't you know, know we'll, I don't know, know why I just imagine Noel on the last I have notes of the month coming up off the dome and just like a. <laughs> 
I have yeah. pyrotechnics in the back. I got a whole light show. Oh, that would be just great. green screen. No, I'll just green like, screen. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for any of this. This was all off the dome. But hold on, let me let me activate this firework real quick. I, I have I have one line for you that you have to use. I just thought about it. Oh, please. Oh, off the dome, so I don't need wow. notes. <gasps> Damn. Wow. That's that's my. Uh, I'm okay. giving you that one. Damn. I see, George. Are you, dude? Are you Damn. a ringer, bro? Do, do you ghost write? I'm giving Damn. you that. Do you, uh, one. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if you much, if you uh, if you use that line, then yes, I do ghost write. <laughs> if you if don't, I then if no. I tossed you about a if I tossed you a cool uh, George Washington, um, which is a one dollar bill. <laughs> how how how, uh, how much would you write? And then if and then if you wrote a lot, mm -hmm. George Washington has a twin brother oh of God. George Washington. <laughs> I really so thought I'll hit you with the two dollars. I really thought you were gonna say, "How about some cool ranch Doritos?" And I was gonna go in, Ooh. all in. Speaking speaking of cool, like random thought about cool ranch Doritos, as wow. a kid, my entire life, I thought it was called Cooler Ranch. I can believe that. I can believe Cooler that. Cooler Ranch. I don't Cooler know why. I, I don't know why. I I I'm I'm on your side on this one, Noel, because I probably have said that once or twice in my lifetime. Cooler Ranch. I could have swore it was Cooler Ranch at one point, and then and then and then the Mandela effect hit us, <laughs> and then only I remember that. That's my story. Yeah, yeah our man it. Mandela. <laughs> <laughs> you ever you ever wake up sometimes in the middle of the night and think to yourself, what if the term Mandela effect is a Mandela effect and nobody knows oh what it's gosh. actually called? Oh my god. <laughs> No, that's too many layers. <laughs> Did you sleep that night, George? <laughs> Do I sleep any night, Issa? <laughs> I got my answer. <laughs> oh, man. I like almost don't want to go to our topic sheet because <laughs> I just like talking with you guys. <laughs> um, just to be topical, even before we hit some stuff. Um... Uh, a couple of things that came up uh, during this last week, shout out, of course, to our very frequent special guest, Aaron Wynn, for bringing this up in our group Slack. Um, we got a uh, Pacific Rim, The Black, which is a new animated series in the Pacific Rim franchise uh, that'll be released on Netflix March 4th. And it is 3D animation. It is done by the same studio that did all that other 3D animes like Ajin, uh Godzilla, the 3D Godzilla animated movie. And I know there's more, and I know I've watched a few or I know of them. I just can't remember off the dome. I'm going to use that term now. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's me uh, for continuing the Pacific Rim franchise. Um, do you guys, do you guys follow? Did you watch the second Pacific Rim, actually? Because I did it. I just watched the first one. Yeah, I just. Watched I mean, the first one. yeah, I mean, because it gets more. It was a. It was the the appropriate evolution because it was going anime anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> like we might as well get you know like the first Pacific Rim. You know, it gave you that vibe of like the robots move like you would imagine a robot would, where everything feels slower because they're giants, and for some reason giants all move. Is, is time different for, for giants? I don't know. Maybe gravity is different, so then that means time. I don't know. Anyway, Mandela effect is the Mandela effect of that. Do you like to talk about space sometimes? Anyway, um, but when you got to the second Pacific Rim, the robot man, you got like samurai looking robots. You got robots with like a mace and they're just moving like Gundams at this point, oh, which I'm really? all about. Oh, I'm all about. Okay, 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 okay. It, that's what it is. Yeah, you don't have to worry about the story. You don't have to worry about like who is it? Is it uh, my man, John Boyega is in the mm -hmm. second one, right? Oh, yeah. And he plays the son of the, what is it? We're, we're taking back the apocalypse. I don't know. That was my Idris Elba in, impression. Good and job. I think I got very Did you say we're taking back <laughs> the apocalypse? Is that, yes. is that what the line yes. is? I don't is that know. The We're canceling the apocalypse. We're, cancel okay. We're canceling yeah. the apocalypse. That makes apocalypse. Sorry, way more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought we were just taking it back. <laughs> you know? It's ours now. We're, we're, we're co-opting co it. it. We're co-opting co We're taking it and we're just putting it right here. Apocalypse is our word. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine if he was really like giving that speech? That that speech that was supposed to like get the troops going. Everyone know they're about to die, and they're like, "Yo, we need the most motivational speech ever." And he's like, "We're taking back the apocalypse," and everyone's just like, 
wait, does that make any sense to y'all? I don't know. <laughs> he was doing so good. I was ready to die until he said that sentence that didn't make any sense. You know, it's like the now one I'm line he's been thinking everything. about. He's been thinking about that one I'm line for months. I'm going to be in the barracks if you need me. From where? From where, George? It's like he's been thinking about that one line for months. That's how he started the speech. Like that oh, was yeah. the line he yeah, came yeah. up with Just first, the and then he worked the speech backwards <laughs> and then messed up yeah. messed up the line at the end. <laughs> well, that's how you do it. You got to write the body of your of your essay first, and then and then you can do the conclusion and then the intro. And you, you, know, you have the get one to line the... for your freestyle. From the <laughs> yeah. True, oh, true. Right. That's your jumping Just off point. Jumping off, off the dome. Off, off the dome. The dome. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the title of your freestyle. Off the dome. I think so. Off the dome. <laughs> off the dome is going to be the title of my new podcast, where I literally just talk <gasps> about whatever comes to my brain immediately, and I don't oh. filter it. <laughs> George, oh, I have no monies for you, but I just greenlit that. Yes, I just greenlit <laughs> it. Good one. Let's. let's oh do my it. god. Who, who? Who do I? Who? Who here can approve? We're doing it. It's Austin live, Dome, and so it's, that it's means on, whatever we say now. here. Yeah, it's on. Like that means whatever we say here has to happen. Yep. I have. I have a lot of podcast ideas true. that nobody wants to do. <laughs> I will green light all of them yeah. with my Mr. Washington and his twin brother, Mr. Washington. Ooh, I like twins. Yeah. <laughs> Is that like a buck 25 or? <laughs> we'll see how that works. 50 cents. Oh my God. That's a good point. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> we'll see how inflation works out after, after this year. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. I see something in the chat here. Hold on. Oh, from, yeah. from Bruno MP Torres. 1994 Cooler Ranch Doritos are introduced now. The flavor is simply not. See, look at that. Bam. Oh, Take no that, way. Mandela. Take that. <laughs> no else. Allegedly, Mandela. Believe it. <laughs> allegedly, Mandela. We should just call it. That's a great idea, George. We should call it that from now on. The allegedly Mandela. The allegedly Mandela. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, one more topical thing I'd also like to mention as well. Um, so I don't know if you guys know this comic uh, artist, Adam Ellis. Not to be confused with the, an Adam Ellis that we may have known already, um, but comic artist specifically, Adam Ellis, uh, blows up uh, short, uh, short film filmmakers of keratin for plagiarizing his idea. Um, I don't know if you've seen this. It's like a long Twitter thread, but the comic maker, basically the... Let me try to summarize it. He made a comic where this guy clipped his nails and would bury it and then he comes back one day and it turns out there's like another human in this place where he buried his nails i don't exactly know the concept or if there's like a fuller story behind this but one of the things that the filmmakers mentioned even is that they took direct inspiration from his comic only they did it pay him or credit him um they even say it in a lot of like different articles and try to get him to like uh promote uh the film but the comic artist himself did not actually endorse it and said that he wasn't into this idea unless i think correct me if i'm wrong unless he was being paid in some way or compensated um but this came up and it's definite. It was making waves on Twitter, and if only I want to bring it up, if only because it's definitely an interesting mm, line or boundary of like the idea of homage, influence, copyright, and we're all creative people, so I'm sure we have different opinions about like this this kind of thing. So, have you guys heard of this? Until mm -hmm. so, I, I'm just kind of curious, like, how does something because it feels like this isn't going to be the only time it's going to happen, but like, how do things get so far into, like, I'm just blown away that it gets so far into the production mm. right. that, yeah. you know, after the film is made, like, that means pre-production happened. They had conversations, they had emails and Slack messages and people sent out, you know, like, you know, like call times and things like that. Like it happened. And then not only did they do the pre-production, they shot it and then they edited it together. And then it goes and starts, you know, playing in festivals and it's doing great. And then they bring it up to, you know, like the 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 comic book or like like the artist, like like the originator, basically. So I'm just more or less really blown away by how something can get that far with with a person's like, you know, ideas or property and, you know, finding that type of information coming to you after the fact. And then they then they have the audacity to be like, hey, dog, can you uh, 
can you like promote this for us? That'd be kind of dope. <laughs> that's, the <laughs> cra- that's, <laughs> that's the crazy part. Like the entire thing. Yeah. There's, there's levels of crazy to this, but it's like, yeah. all right, first I'm going to take your idea and then I'm going to do your idea. <laughs> and, and then when my, when your idea is big because I did it, I'm going to make you promote it. That's the entire plan. <laughs> That sounds, yeah. that sounds insane. I I do want to mention to chat uh, ACLEC and Hodgelet. Thank you very much. They mentioned that the origin of the comic, the comic artist said it was about his rebirth after leaving BuzzFeed um, and moving on mm. with his career. So, you know, the classic, like, why I left BuzzFeed kind of people. Um, I say kind so of So it's also people, personal. <laughs> yeah, it's personal yeah, on yeah, top yeah. of that. Very. Yeah. yeah, and um, one of the things that uh, Adam calls out is like it's it's pretty much shot for shot, and they weren't ever really clear about where the inspiration came from. So it seems like they're trying to hide it. So it's 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 a kind of messed up. What's the name of the movie? <laughs> uh, Keratin. What? What's the name um, of the comic? <laughs> ooh, I. F- Chat. Yeah, I don't know. Chat ooh. help. Because <laughs> Chat if help. the name of the comic is Keratin. <laughs> oh yeah wow. oh, oh my god audacious Auda- yeah. yeah basically the audacious. audacity the, uh, <laughs> yeah i mean there's there's definitely those those fine lines between like homage and, and yeah inspiration and just... all that but I, I think anybody who again I, I this is just from what i've been told in this in this uh podcast and i haven't done any further looking into it but based off of just that i feel like it's pretty obvious it's not an homage at that point you're just right it's just theft. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I stole everything in your house and put it in mine. I didn't steal your stuff. I just made an homage to your house in my house. I do feel like to, to a certain extent, I believe that like there's nothing totally new under the sun. Like mm. we, we've, we've told a lot of stories again and again. And what's important is like how you tell it and your specific kind of voice and vision for it. Yeah. Like I, I when I was reading about on this story, I heard, I read the premise and I thought, well, I've seen something like that before. Like Scrubs did a very similar like bit where it's, it's definitely different where Turk buries a testicle and then a clone of Turk pops up and, 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 and like attacks him and it's in a fantasy. Um, but the thing that got me was the, is that it's the sh- it's the shot for shot. Like when you see the two shots next to each other, the compositions are identical, and it seems like even by that alone, the tone is similar. And so it's it's more than just like taking an idea. It's like they took his idea and his execution, and it's it's one step further than just like it seems one step further than just homage to yeah. me. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, wild i'm wondering if they like had like storyboards and then like yeah they, they <laughs> drew their own they drew their own for like for the rest of the film but then like occasional like this comic like will pop up in the storyboard and everyone's like what's this about i don't know <laughs> you got all the Man. pieces to remake it so might as well just use it <laughs> I mean, they could have just used his web comic as storyboards, and they'd be like, "These are fantastic boards." <laughs> I love, I love right? the color. And it just pops up every once in a while in the storyboard. <laughs> yeah, huh. this, this is that. That's that's messed up. It's it's, it's a. Uh, Why would you ask a me predicament. to promote it? <laughs> I don't know. Off the dome. Off the dome. <laughs> no. off the dome. I came up with this entire concept off the dome. Um, I want to do a mid roll, but I just learned this information right now, so I'm throwing a curveball at everyone. Jeff Bezos just announced that he's stepping down as CEO of Amazon. Um, gonna let that ruminate. (laughs) I, I, I don't, I don't know. I just heard, and I'm like, yeah, I, I just read about that before we got on, and I couldn't find out the why of it all. Like, it's, it's kind of his plan. I think it's third quarter. He, he'll be out, and he's. They've named a replacement and everything, yeah, but that's right. I don't know why he's leaving. I mean, like when you are officially like the richest man in the world, like at some point, are you wanting to uh, use some of that money? I guess, like or, you're or saying try to. He's, you know, like he's saved enough for his doomsday device, <laughs> <laughs> and is ready to just to just hit, the, hit the ground like, running. Quarter four. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. would, I would be very impressed if like his next venture in life is I'm gonna try my hardest to use all of my money as quick. Like I'm gonna try to use it and try to just like run out because I don't think it's physically possible for him to run out of his money. Like he just has so much of it. 
I just think the, I don't even know, like, I forget like what the number was, but it was just like one of those things to where like every second he was making thousands and thousands oh, yeah. of like dollars per second yeah. in a day. And I'm like, man, it's, like, it's, so it's a challenge. Can I spend this money before I die? <laughs> exactly. That's his new thing. Can I, can I spend this money? Can I, I turn my so. life into blank check? <laughs> and spend all my money. What a great movie. <laughs> I I remember back in the early 2000s, everybody was talking about like, yeah, Bill Gates makes so much money that he could walk down a sidewalk and if he saw a $100 bill, it would cost him money to bend down and pick it up. And that was in the yep. early 2000s. So just imagine like how much money Jeff Bezos would have to find just like sitting on the sidewalk for him to even think about going over there to get it. <laughs> Oh my see for God. me it's a it's a it's a dime it's yeah. a di like th that's it like if i see a dime i'm like okay all right i'm interested, I'm interested. <laughs> no way. but for him then i assume the man's got to be like yo how much is that is that a hundred thousand not 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 worth not it, worth it. <laughs> no. i feel like you get bored of things and money and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. at that point like hey I, guys did you did you know that 10% of 1 billion is $10 million? <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. No, sorry. You know, that's 1%. Dare, it's 1% of 1 billion. I dare him. I, wasn't I, question, challenge, <laughs> I challenge Jeff Bezos to try to spend all of his money before he dies. I challenge you, bro. I mean, Off the dome. Off the dome. <laughs> off the dome. <laughs> off the dome. <laughs> he has a very shiny dome to go off of. Oh, true. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's true. The, true. the perfect true. off the dome. That's the, that's the episode title, Sam, just so you know. <laughs> what is, what is okay. the go cheapest ahead. thing? Sorry, but before we, we jump off, because again, this is just how my brain works. What do you Please. think is the least expensive thing Jeff Bezos does in a week? <gasps> like... <laughs> Like, obviously not the normal stuff, like, get up and take a shower. Although, like, his but, water pressure could be, like, $1,000. And <laughs> his shower yeah. itself is, yeah. Yes, so, like, what do you think is the cheapest thing Jeff Bezos does in a day? Man. Jeff Bezos, to me, this is pure speculation because I clearly know who Jeff Bezos is on a personal level. Mm -hmm. I feel like Jeff Bezos... Bezos, Bezos, Bezos. I feel like dude eats probably the plainest oatmeal. Oh my ever. god! <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm talking like even some of the packet ones, you know, like the peaches and cream one oh or something like my that. God. <laughs> but I feel like he's that. Like I feel like he 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 just in the morning. What do you eat? I'm eating oatmeal. Are you gonna put anything in it? Nah, I'm good, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> Flavor, I don't need that in my life right now. Like, I think that's probably the cheapest thing he does in a day. <laughs> Salt, Tyler, he's salty. <laughs> he's trying to choke himself, like, with salty and crack. That math makes my stomach hurt, just thinking about that amount of money. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh my god sorry, that, okay. that is a oh hi dog the dog saw another dog oh before. dog wants me to do mid-roll I, I guess that's the cue <laughs> uh it's mid-roll time baby i want to do a quick mention that we're celebrating black heritage month uh george hinted at it earlier we're highlighting voices in the black community with special streams like this friday we're having our first and last episode with tori and crawford yay There'll be some familiar faces on there. Um, uh, this is a behind the scenes thing, but I joked with Noel that I was invited to the barbecue, or it's more like Noel said that. So um, mm -hmm, I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna put that on Noel. I was invited. To you the get barbecue. you get you get three plates. <laughs> wow. You get three plates wrapped in foil. You get three <laughs> plates to go. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Noel. And of course, big shout out to our first members for helping make all of us happen. Uh, if you're a first member, you can get cool discounts at the store, see exclusive content, exclusive, and you can participate in chat on everything. We'll call you out. Um, join the gang. Join first. Fert, fert, fert. <laughs> fert, 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 fert. fert. I don't know where that came from, but um, I like it a lot. Everyone in chat always says it whenever you mention like first members, and I kind of love it. Yeah. Maybe you know. Fur 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 fur. Um. So, uh, I did ask if we could go a little longer because I did want to get to um something we wanted to talk about today, which was Soul. Uh, Soul is the newest movie from Pixar that came out on Christmas Day. It is streaming uh, on Disney Plus in North America. Um, oh, uh, Stab says Chelsea flubbed spelling first and wrote Furt, so that's why it's Furt. 
Um, oh, I got an answer. Thank context. you, Steph. Thank you. <laughs> that makes sense. Thank you, Steph. So, um, Soul uh, is a movie about a uh, black jazz musician who dies, and he's trying to get back to life via crazy stuff that happens in the afterlife. It's kind of like the natural evolution after Pixar's Inside Out. Um, some fun metrics, even though it uh, was not available in theaters in North America. It made 83 million worldwide still. Pretty good. Um, domestic streaming, it was considered successful because there's a lot of minutes in that. I, Man, uh, streaming metrics are always a little funky to me because how, yeah. how, how do you define success? Yeah, you know that, George. <laughs> you know that life. Uh, but overall, what did we think about Soul? Yeah, I mean, let's start. Let's start with uh, with with our guests here, because I I can I can go on definitely about mine, but like George, what were your thoughts, my man? Because you watched it recently, right? I did. I watched it yesterday. Mm. Nice. Uh, I watched it yesterday, and then I got a Slack saying, "Hey, want to talk about Soul today?" I went, <laughs> "Yeah, that's what I do." Off the I dome. Thought, I thought, off, off the, the dome. dome. I, off the dome. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was very unexpected in the sense that I didn't see any marketing for it. I was just like scrolling through disney plus super bored because i'd watched wandavision and i just was like i need another disney fix (laughs) and i went soul interesting clicked on it thought it was like soul about music should have known because it's a pixar movie it's about somebody Mm. dying (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but i was pleasant i thought the i thought the art was beautiful i thought anytime they were in the uh in basically wherever they come up with their personalities and they had like the 2d line art with all the 3d i thought that was gorgeous i love any any movie that makes me not want to get into animation is a movie i love and i'll explain why because (laughs) i'll watch it and i'll go oh my god there are incredibly talented people in here that are deserving and should be doing this and i'm glad that i'm not there to take one of their spots (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I, I think it's a phenomenal movie. I thought it was I thought it was fantastic. A couple of questionable things, but I, I I would give it like a like an eight and a half out of ten. Nice, nice, nice. Nice. Cool, cool. Yeah. What about you? Joshua, Josh? what were your thoughts, my man? Yeah. I really, really liked it. Um I would say that I was apprehensive all the way through and then as it ended I was very satisfied and I really, really liked it. Um One of the things that kind of I was iffy about as it was happening, and I wonder if anybody else can relate to this. For the first part of the movie, I thought, oh, we're doing The Good Place. Ah. It's Pixar's version of The Good Place, especially when like the first little hiccup is that um, he gets confused for somebody else in the afterlife. And I was like, oh, this is The Good Place. And it sucks because Pixar movies take you know, five years to make. So they probably started it before The Good Place happened and The Good Place completed before they were able to release it. So (laughs) you could just get stuck in that situation. Uh, But then it very quickly becomes something else and it takes a couple turns that I didn't expect. Mm. Um, But yeah, I loved, I I really, really loved the way that it ended. I loved the kind of conversations that happen uh, afterwards, like people kind of debating on whether or not, um, I'm forgetting the main character's name, but whether or not he kind of, Yeah, whether Joe, like, finally moves on and goes into the great beyond or if he should have gone back to Earth and gets the second chance. And I really enjoy that debate because I feel like the film sets itself itself up so that either ending would have worked Mm -hmm. and would have been satisfying. And they made a decision and then and settled with it. And you either kind of like it or you don't. But either way, I think that debate is super interesting. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Mm, interesting. Interesting. Issa, what were your thoughts? Uh... It's so funny enough, I think I might be like one of the rare outliers um, about Soul. Uh, Don't get me wrong. I think the last third, especially that where it hits like that really quiet climax, you know, you guys know what I'm talking Mm -hmm. about with Joe at the piano Mm -hmm. um, and then the way it ended. I cried for 10 minutes and it was so hard for me to describe uh after a point like why i was crying so much um i did get to a point because even my uh, my so we watched it together and he he was like questioning a lot of things and i had to explain to him i'm just like wait the reason why i'm feeling these things is because what just happened is such like is such a moving idea and it's kind of like mm-hmm. this like base idea that i think we all kind of operate on is like every life not um how do i put it uh, everyone is worth loving, regardless of who they are, right? Um, hmm. And the way that they did that at the end, it was it was really powerful. 
Uh, there are certain things that I definitely uh, had a lot of questions for. Um, and where it so lands on for me is that ultimately, if you had a thesis statement and you didn't exactly prove it, then I was I'm a little iffy on it. So that that's how I how I viewed Soul. However, technically amazing, I still cried like a bitch. Don't get me wrong. Um, <laughs> and there's definitely some like questionable things that I uh, I did want to. I, I was like, hmm, I definitely narrowed my eyes at, which was kind of the whole like, oh, uh, Tina Fey is in his body now. I don't know how to mm -hmm. feel about that. It, it made me feel super awkward um, uh, on a number of levels. Uh, but I think where they went with Soul, like they, they hit a mark. I don't know if it's the mark for me specifically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. for That's a really good perspective for for me before i i say how i feel about the movie which t, you know tldr i i enjoyed it i i just i just wanted to bring up and this is spoiler alert so you know i apologize because i'm about to spoil it my man comes back at the end but no one addresses because there's not enough time because the movie ends yeah. no one addresses he comes back retaining the knowledge that this man knows okay. how the yeah. cosmos work yeah. This man has seen <laughs> not only the after, like he's seen the before, and I'm like, yo, he's met, he's met the Jerry's, he's met the Terry. <laughs> which, 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 by the way, which, by the way, Terry, if you're out there, mind your damn business. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry about what about what Joe's got going on. Just keep counting, my, just keep counting. Mind your damn business. Terry was like, oh, I, I love that character, but it was just, just had to say it. Mind your damn business. <laughs> but yeah, Joe. Joe had like he just comes back and he's like yeah I'm just gonna live my life you know like like to the best I can the fullest I can I'm like bro you can write a book right now and become like a bazillionaire if you wanted to you could become the next Jeff Bezos if you wanted to <laughs> and then I challenge you in the next soul two to try Soul2. to spend all your money before you die that's who it is I, so I but I'd like to I'd like to counter that thought with with this wait I, the spend of money thought no or the no, no no the him coming back and like telling everybody because he knows all this information. I had that same thought, but the, the, and let me know if I'm wrong with this thought process, but everybody can get in the zone and presumably the people that can get in the zone as depicted in the movie are also aware of all the Cosmo stuff. Correct? Oh yeah, that's right. So that would mean anybody who could get in the zone could do that. And they probably do, but everybody thinks they're crazy, which is what <laughs> real life is. Yeah. <laughs> So that was a picture. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler or Mike. I forget who's pulling up stuff, but that was a picture of the great before. So one, I love the movie. I thought it was great. I, uh, I definitely want to ask everyone here, you know, like a thematic question of the movie, you know, like what is your spark? Mm. But real mm. quick, I definitely just wanted to talk, you know, like, cause I am a uh, aspiring cinematographer. Mm. I really yes. appreciated the you know like the the use of color in this movie you know obviously it, you know using color as a, as as a theme or you know like color contrast isn't anything new but i just really wanted to touch on like you know when when joe goes to this uh before you know uh the the great before everything has this really like nice smooth soft lighting everything is very slightly blurred because obviously he's you're in this little limbo state there's a nice bluish you know turquoise type of vibe so really the most important are the blues and then oh, huh. when you get into the like the the on earth you know welcome to earth is a will smith line i love to use <laughs> um but if we can switch to that next picture look at that everything yeah. is warmer oh. and you know the 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 lighting is a lot you know it's it's a lot of like point source lighting so if he's outside you know running in the streets you have like the harsh sun hitting him but in this case here when he's like you know doing his little jazz thing you know he's <laughs> you've got like the hard lights from the from the stage so i just really appreciated the use of that color and then one thing maybe this is me in my own head but my man's wearing a blue suit. Mm. So it mm. kind of gave me this vibe of like, he's still, you know, in between. Because even though at this point in the uh, in the story, you know, he's obviously kind of returned. Again, spoiler alert, I apologize. He's kind of returned <laughs> and he's kind of doing his thing and he's trying to find what he believes is his purpose yeah. or his spark. But he's still wearing this like thematically blue suit so i thought it was uh i thought it was a nice uh cool touch there off the dome Ooh, that was i was gonna dome. say that too very smart off noel very smart <laughs> <laughs> i did not notice that that's pretty dope yeah i, I would have never yeah. picked up on that yeah 
I'll be honest, I noticed that probably 30 minutes before we aired because I just watched Soul really fast before we came on. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> like the you... research. <laughs> You're putting in the work. Yeah, yeah. When you say you watched Soul really fast, do you mean for like the second time or third time? The second time. Okay. The second time. Yeah, like the first time I watched it on Christmas Day and then mm -hmm. – when I messaged you, George, about like, uh, you know, like being on mm -hmm. and then I was like, oh, man, what was the movie that that has done very well? And, you know, like an animated feature in, in recent times. And I was like, oh, soul, we could talk about that. So then I pitched the idea and then I was like, I don't remember everything. So let me <laughs> let me pretend like I'm educated and I'll just speed through it real quick. So it, I think I did a pretty good job. I think I did. I OK, think so. I would agree. Uh, I uh, shout out Tyler Stab in chat just went soul two soul harder. <laughs> yeah, Ooh, <laughs> thank you. I like that. Ooh, thank action you, movie. Action, action movie. is the sport. <laughs> oh man. Can it be? A, can it be a crossover with uh, Brink and it could be like <laughs> souls. Oh. Soul, soul skaters, skaters. Soul yo. Skaters. <laughs> Team Pup and Suds returns all oh, right for the chat. If you don't George. know about that's the dance. Whenever he, late nineties well. Disney Channel like extreme <laughs> sport movies. Brink is where it's at. Like Brink oh. is amazing. I love Brink. Is it, is it amazing? <laughs> it's, it's okay. I know. I it's a fantastic time. <laughs> I love it. It's so much fun. His spark, was, have... his spark was inline skating. Oh, thank you, right. thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Johnny for Tsunami. The fun of it, another not for the one. Yeah. Okay. Disney had these bangers of like extreme sport films in the late '90s, early aughts. Oh, <laughs> what a what a great time to be alive. Early aughts. <laughs> um, I did. I want to circle back to that question you asked, Noel. What is everyone's yes. spark? I like kind of like that. Mm. What is everyone's spark? Noel. George, please George, do us someone. do us the honors, my man. What is my spark? Honestly, after watching that movie, I still didn't understand the difference between the spark and the purpose. I feel like they didn't mm. explain that very well. They tried to, like, cram it in at the very end and be like, oh, yeah, this is the lesson of the movie. Get out of here. So <laughs> <laughs> get out of here. Uh, still an 8.5. Uh, I, 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 I told you, sucker for music. You give me some good music, I'll forgive a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, music. Music is my spark. I'm not Aww. a musician. Uh, anymore, but I, I I love being around it. I love hearing it. Sound. I love I love I love different sounds. I uh, I love finding new music. I love sharing music. I, mm. I mean, before Rooster Teeth, I, that's what I did for seven years was just work in and around music. Um, oh, and yeah, that's 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 my spark. Bringing music to the masses. Oh. Who's your Who's your favorite musician right now? Oh. Top top musician right now. Of all time. Off the dome. Uh, Off the dome. Wait, you can't, uh, right now or of all time? <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, okay, okay. No way. Uh, right now, right now, uh, J.I.D., who has been, is a rapper from Atlanta, has been on repeat for me. Uh, but if you look at my Spotify and believe what they tell me every single year, uh, most of what I listen to is Emojin Heap or Sade. Uh. <laughs> mm. uh, so According yeah. to Spotify, uh, <laughs> but Spotify doesn't know my YouTube listening habits. So, oh, yeah. interesting. But yeah, I'm, I'm very much a yeah like JID right now, Emojin Heap all the time, Sade all the time. Uh, give me, give me some some. Uh, been listening to a lot of. Who is it? Who is it? I'm listening to right now. Shuffle, <laughs> shuffle playlist on shuffle. <laughs> What type of music it. did you did you have growing up? Like what what were the influences that like your parents put on you? So my parents uh, are from the Democratic Republic of Congo, formerly known as Zaire. Oh. Um, so Ooh. a lot of the music that I listened to was not in English. Uh, it was it was either in French or it was in Lingala, which is a Bantu dialect you speak in the in Zaire. Um, and my cousins, though, are very American, so it was very much, it was like around the early 2000s where I started to recognize my love of music, like when I was getting to like middle school, high school oh. age. So it's a lot of, uh, give me, give me any, any 2000s like R&B, give oh, me, yeah. give me any like Frankie Beverly and Mays, uh, any, Ooh, any, okay. any song that was featured in a Tyler Perry play, I probably <laughs> <did>. <laughs> uh, 
one of my 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 one of my closest friends, my best friend, his name is his name is Tony. His family is very much into like eighties music and like seventies music and stuff. And I'm, they're Cuban. He's half Cuban and half Italian, and oh. so I picked up a whole. I didn't know any Beatles songs until I was a sophomore in high school, just because I was never mm. exposed to it until mm. I met them. So I learned about the Beatles in high school. I learned about uh, name some other like really big. I don't want to say like white people artist. <laughs> but you can. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, but I was thinking yeah, of the Beach Boys. I, I, was, I was aware, I was aware of, yeah, the Beach Boys, I knew they existed, but I hadn't listened to a song of theirs until I was in high school. Um, Just like Nickelback is what we're talking about. Nickelback transcends. We're talking about Coldplay, Nickel, right? Nickelback, we're talking about the fray? Rice. The fray? Nickelback anyway. transcends rice. <laughs> <laughs> and, and anybody who says they don't like Nickelback is a liar because the only reason why hey, they any reason why photograph. people hate Nickelback is because they're super popular. And the only reason why they're super popular is because mm-hmm. everybody loves Nickelback. Stop lying to yourselves. <laughs> Stop lying to the people. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my take. Thank you. Oh, well, Thank you. That was a that. gift. That, that was a great. gift. <laughs> Josh. Hey, hey, Josh, what's your I think you were spark? in the zone. Yeah, what's, your, was, what's yeah, your spark, Josh? It. Let's just go to Josh. <laughs> 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 yeah, Josh, what's it? Oh man, let's. Uh, I'm torn between the two uh, the two aspects of production. Like, I feel so lucky that we get to we get to work in production because this is what I love doing. Um, I I really love writing. I really love every part of the writing process. Like when the first draft is terrible and you have you have to beg people for notes and you get to implement notes and rewrite it and rewrite it and rework it. That part is so so satisfying to me i love coming up with dialogue and and figuring out how characters sound and how they bounce off of each other and what they would do in a certain situation that part is so fun um but it's either that or like it's really hard to beat watching the final product with a crowd with an audience i've got Mm. i've been lucky enough to do that a couple times and it's so satisfying like that's when in soul when they when they show people in the zone that's where i that's where my brain went to. Like, that's when I feel like I'm in the zone when I'm like oh. listening to a crowd react to something you made, something that you were involved oh. in, you know, when they're watching in a dark theater and they're laughing or they're whatever, you know, it's like that, that feeling is awesome. And I, f- I first had that in high school and I've been like chasing it ever since. Oh, interesting. Love it. Ooh. Wow. Nice. Oh. Issa, do you want to go? Do you want to go? I want to know more about Issa right <laughs> Don't now. Don't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was thinking about it just because I know you did mention that, um, or George, I know you said that there's like this difference between purpose and spark. So mm-hmm. it's, you know, just trying to remember that that's not necessarily a purpose in life, but it's kind of like what makes you want to live, I think, um, is how I would de- determine that. Man, and I don't know if I have quite the answer, but there's two things that kind of come to mind. And, and one of them is, love because i'm a romantic at heart but don't oh. at me if you say you like me i will <laughs> tell you to shut up i will i will turn away hey, um hey, george, don't, george, george don't george don't george don't george okay, don't I won't, I won't, okay. I won't do it. <laughs> george shut up <laughs> yes ma'am <laughs> um, but i love love um Shipping is my reason. Um, <laughs> but I think the other thing I could think about is dance, actually. Um, fun fact, I was really into hip hop dancing in uh, middle school, high school, and that's because of my siblings. Um, it was definitely part of those like Asian dance crews that you may have seen on YouTube kind of a thing. Like I was in that scene. Um, and we we're on the East Coast specifically. So it, it was a smaller crowd compared to what the West Coast was like back in the early 2000s. Um, and so like Josh, when you're talking about like what gets you in the zone to me, like what gets me in the zone is actually like thinking about dancing or like dancing to Mm. songs and things like that. So it's like, yeah, something along those lines is what I would say. Yo, I just want to, I just want to see Issa dancing with the Jabberwockies right now. Oh my gosh. Oh, I would love to see that. America's (laughs) best dance crew. Dance crew. Yes. Thank you, Josh. Thank you so much. (laughs) Of every season of that show, of all the dance yes. crews, they were the actual best. <laughs> they were the actual best. Oh they're the God, only ones that, so that anybody good. still knows about. Like they're it's still true. they're still yes. in things. It's true. And I appreciate that. Like you don't know who they are still. I mean, like relatively speaking, yeah. like you may know you know individuals, but like 
you don't know if that's this person because they got masks because they know it's not about <laughs> it's it's not about like them individually it's about when they come together yeah. and then that's them in their zone oh man Issa Perfect. please be a Jabberwocky <laughs> there's please there's, there's who, who's to say she isn't a Jabberwocky oh Oh my gosh. They, they all wear masks. Mind blown. Off the dome. Off the dome. Oh, That's off it. The dome. Mind off the blown. Dome. Off the dome. <laughs> off the dome. <laughs> Mandela effect. Mandela allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. I, I would I would say for for me, my my spark has been wanting to just tell stories. I'm I'm I kind of hopped on the whole vibe of like what do I want to do very late in in not relatively speaking like i would say i didn't realize i wanted to get into film or really just telling stories until i was roughly like 27 28 and so i've just been you know at it just wanting to tell stories i just kind of realized that as a kid i just always told stories and even if i just kind of told them to myself i just really enjoyed that so i don't count that as my purpose but i see that as my spark because and maybe this goes into my actual purpose i really enjoy trying to positively affect other people's lives and i feel like maybe i can do that through storytelling mm. so you know mm -hmm. i don't know i mean i kind of now that like isa like that was a dope story now i kind of want to dance a little bit <laughs> you know I, mean? I kind of want to like i just kind of want to get him get there, him. We get him. Get him. there we go here we go here we go freestyle <laughs> freestyle and dance damn yeah. and dance <laughs> A whole performance. I, th I think my bones are a little too old for that. I, I don't think I have enough uh, uh, ACL in my knee. Is that the? <laughs> is that what it's called? Uh, I think I'll tear the ACL instantly. The moment I try to do a windmill, that ACL is gone. Why would you start with a windmill? <laughs> wow. Straight to windmill. Oh my gosh. Cause, cause Johnny Tsunami, you got to go big or go home. Like, go big or go home. Tyler, I know you're smiling. I hope little, you're smiling when I said that. <laughs> Well, <laughs> Noel at the middle school dance, and everybody's like this, yeah, super far like, apart, yeah. and his his he's gonna go, nah, windmill. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we're going go. in, we're going in windmill right now, back triple backflip right now, and they're like, bro, you don't you have, don't have to, to go do that. that. These people will remember you, me forever. <laughs> why did you show up already sweating right now? Do I? What did you <laughs> I was warming up, man. I was warming up. I like how you mentioned that your bones are old and already people in chat are like, wait, how old is Noel? He doesn't every look time, older than uh, Every us. time Noel says how old he is, I, I get confused and then remember I know that already. <laughs> I'm the, the hint is I, I'm pretty sure I could say out of this uh, panel of amazing people, I'm probably the oldest. And I will say. I can guarantee you I'm the oldest. <laughs> Noel, Noel is older than me. And I'm turning <laughs> I'm turning twenty nine at the end of the month. So Oh you are? Wow. And and, and, and Noel is more than a couple years older than me. So that gives you a hint. Yeah. As to how I'll say this. I went into high school and graduated high school before you got to high school. <laughs> like when Noel was saying when Noel was saying like at 27, 28, I figured out I wanted to be a storyteller. That made me feel comfortable sitting here right now, just not figuring out what I want to do in my life. That's how old Noel is. <laughs> me, me before that, me before 27, I was basically Terry. I was Terry from Seoul. And that's why I say, Terry, mind, mind your, your damn business, all right? Mind your business. Figure out Terry. your spark. <laughs> figure out. And counting is like, is not the purpose. I feel like the secret Noel is whenever someone is like, "Wait, how old is Noel?" You like get younger. It's like the magic words <laughs> that unlock the fountain of youth. So it's just like this cycle of you just keep looking younger and younger. I'll just <laughs> one of my bucket list goals has always been to like work with Pharrell Williams, but it's just because he's a vampire and I want to be a vampire with him. And I just think we'd have a cool name, you know, Pharrell and Noel or Noel and Pharrell, whichever, I, we could do it all. Exactly. We could just the do power everything. levels in that room, if you guys got into the same room, I don't know. Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> we 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 Benjamin Button the whole time. That, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. We would just we would just de age oh, the whole time. <laughs> there there's a special club for the vampires, and that'd be you, Noel, um, uh, Pharrell, and Keanu Reeves. Ooh, and no, we got to throw in a Jared Leto uh, in that Jared mug. Leto. Jared Leto, mm. Jared Leto, that man. The vampire Ooh. club. Um, <laughs> so uh, I want to say thanks, guys, for joining us. I will uh, find George. I'll say it. I like you. I like you too, Noel. I like you too, yes. Josh. This is arguably a room full of my arguably favorite people. Arguably. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, but really, I appreciate y'all for spending time with me and with the group. Uh, that was that was a great hour. Thank you for having yeah. us. This is yeah, a lot of fun. Thanks for Kevin. Uh, uh, thank you. Oh, so so my outro right now is thank you, Noel. We'll see you again. Thank you, George. Yes. We'll also see you again. Uh, thank you, Josh. We'll see you again too. Oh, look at that. Um, <laughs> uh, Chat since you're here. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. We'll see each other. Look at us sitting here. Look at us. Look at us. Uh, thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, um, yeah. since, Chad, since you're here, check out Dead Little Roosters. Uh, there's a new episode premiering on Friday for first members. Um, and since you're still here, you should definitely check out uh, Staying Zen, Stay Zen with Kaden. Um, shout out, Kaden is also also very good. I like Kaden too. There, I said it. Don't look I at me. I love Kaden. <gasps> She's the best. Eventually, okay. Issa's going to like so many people and forget one person. <laughs> 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 that's that's probably true george george has read me off the dome <laughs> <laughs> off the dome <laughs> allegedly oh <laughs> uh, thanks guys that's our show see you next week <laughs> thank you